my main interest is psychology of money, but of course money doesn't have any psychology at all. When we talk about psychology of money, we actually mean the psychology of people who deal with money in different social situations. When I was in a primary school, I believed that I would be teaching mathematics in the future. Then I started to give some private lessons for my peers and for younger children, and I realized that I virtually cannot communicate with children. Then I went to a high school and I was specializing in mathematics, and I still didn't know what I would like to do in the future. And then at the end of the high school, I hesitated between choosing uh, management as a major and psychology. I, I went to management school uh, and I studied marketing management. And on the third year, I met my future supervisor, Professor Czesław Nosa, a very renowned psychologist. And this was the moment when I knew that this is the area for me and this is what I want to do. Consumer behavior was an important part of my interest during that time. That's why I started my PhD. That was in marketing management, but the topic was somewhere in between psychology and marketing. It was impulsive buying. So the, the purchases that we do without, let's say, any cognitive or mental engagement. Then I realized that when we want to talk about buying, we need to think about money because buying is not only about acquiring things, it's also about spending what you have. And that brought me to the topic of money, to the topic of money attitudes especially. And I decided to do a second PhD in psychology about money attitudes. In a very recent paper that I've published this year in Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, we tested the relations between compensatory control or actually the feeling of lack of control and how people form their relationships. Basically, we assumed that in a contemporary world that is full of market-related behaviors, there must be a reason why people in specific situation prefer to choose market-related norms to communal norms, even in close relations. We thought that our contemporary world is so overwhelmed with uncertainty, unpredictability and low structure that people would prefer those relationships that at least look like they have structure. When you think about market contracts, when you think about buying something on the market, this situation almost always have a structure. When you rent a car from a rental, you know the price, you know what are the rules, you know what would happen if you, for example, uh, destroy the car or if you cause an accident. If you lend the car from your friend, you don't know what it would be when you, for example, had a car crash. So in many situations, people choose to rent a car from a rental because this situation is more organized and more structured. And what we found in our research is that especially under control threat, so in a situation when we feel like we lack control over the reality, we prefer to choose market-related uh, situation over communal-related situation, and we are more prone to see ambiguous situations as if they were full of market rules. On the other hand, when we exposed our participants to market-related cues, we found that they experience greater feeling of control than those who are exposed either to communal cues or neutral cues. But these effects are not universal, especially people who have insecure style of attachment are prone to turn to market relations in the face of threat. There is a stereotypical view that what satisfies the researcher the most is getting money for research, having the papers published, or having the nice results that confirms the hypothesis. But actually, this is not the case. What really satisfies me the most is the success of my PhD students or my students in general. 
when my students develop their own ideas, when they work independently, when they learn something new and I see that they've learned something new, this is something that really satisfies me the most. If you want to work in academia, if you want to be engaged in the research, you need to think about the reason and the goal for doing that. If you just want to do a PhD, then it's not a best idea. But if you want to learn something about the future, if you want to learn something about the human being, about physics, about biology, that is the best idea for becoming a good researcher.